Okay. Okay, that took it. Okay. These are some major subfields, and others too. Huh? Don't worry, there's no test on this. But if you do philosophy of education, then maybe you want to look at this. But if not, you can forget this. One is how do we look at the world? Okay? The first one. Okay. Uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? The second one is the theory of knowledge. Okay? Uh, how do we know certain thing exists? Empiricism, rationalism, and so on. The third one is what is good? What is bad? Okay? And then here, what are our relations which are considered to be proper in society? The government must recognize. And then here, the use of language when we talk about women, for example. So all of these have impact on how we look at feminism. So idealists would say, well, it's our uh, dreams, hope, the aspiration, the, I the ideal type of how women should be treated. Okay? But the materialists would say, no, let's don't talk about what should be, but what is. How are women in reality today? But then there is a close relationship between the two. It doesn't mean it's one or the other. There's a close relationship, dialectical relationship between Okay, so we will go over them and see the different ways by which philosophy affects our understanding of feminism. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, we can look at this as from the right to the left, okay? If I can change this direction. Yeah, I can. Let's make it this way. So we're moving from the right to the left, and we're looking at uh, how the different ideologies affect the way by which we study So you have on the right, right, the extreme right, what we call as reactionary. It's the belief according to which, so this will be the idealist way, we're looking at ideas primary. Saving the file. Okay. Yeah. So reactionary will look at, uh, we want to turn back the clock. Okay. If we assume that we move from A, to C or to N, and everything in between. Let's assume A is year, let's say 383 BC. Okay? And then let's say N is year 2013. The reactionary would want us to go back to the practice of the olden days. For example, the woman is completely veiled except for the eyes. What the Taliban did. Where are the Taliban? Who are the Taliban? What's the Taliban? <laughs> it, where, yeah? Yeah, there are the... Yeah, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, border, and they are really... Yeah, they came from... Afghan, Pakistan area, and they're all over, they're moving everywhere. And they want the woman to go back and wear the veil. And, and let's say in the year 1980s, women were like you. They wear normal clothes. But then the Taliban said, no, you have to go back in the old days. If you don't, we'll give you 28 lashes, or you'll be stoned to death. That's reactionary. You want to go back in time, which is already gone, and using or threat of use of force. That's reactionary. Conservative would be saying, well, you know, how a woman should be treated uh, with kindness and gentleness by men. Meaning what? 
Oh, once a woman would want to ride a car or enter a room, you have to open the door for her. That's proper. That's feudal, right? That's in the period of medievalism. Okay, you have the gentleman chivalry. Okay, but if you go to a libertarian woman, she would say, no, I do as I please. Don't even open the door, you're insulting me. Like, I, what do you think of me? I can't open the door? You think I'm dumb? Okay, it's very different. There are different kinds of feminism. So don't say, oh, she's a feminist, I better do this. No, you have to say, what kind of feminist is she? Okay, it's so many, if she's conservative, she would say, but why aren't you paying my bill? It's my right to be treated. And if you want to break up, I keep the ring. <laughs> you, know, you gave it to me, it's mine. Right? But the libertarian would say, let me open my own door. You don't have to deal with it. You think I can't wash the dishes? You think I'm stupid? Okay. But then the liberal would say, let's not talk about you and you alone. You have to look at the bigger society. So you have to think of the welfare of, uh, the, of the common good. The liberal would say, uh, if there are people who have less in life, those who have more in life should be able to help those who have less in life. That's why you need to have uh, <clears throat> Uh, some uh, safety nets in society to protect those who are blessed in life. For example, there are rich women and there are poor women. So maybe the rich women can come up with an organization, a humanitarian school, and provide some services to women who need you know, uh, health care, uh, reproductive rights support, whatever, dental services, child care, so they can go to work and eat out and uh, living for their family. But radical comes from the root word radix, which means root, okay? So you're looking at the root causes. It's not superficial only, but you're looking at what are the causes of the problem, and there are many different variants, okay? You have the so-called progressive and social democratic. Some call this uh, <clears throat> socialist, but again, that will confuse the vocabulary because let's say the socialists uh, government of Allende is different from the socialist government of the former Soviet Union. Okay, one is revolutionary arm, uh, as a result of which you had so the, the former Soviet Union. And Allende's Chile was through democratic election, right? Was it democratic election? In, yeah, okay. So the, not to confuse the vocabulary, it's sometimes called social democratic. So you're calling for unity of all of the progressive forces in society. So women's struggle is not separate from the struggle of society. So there are women workers, and women workers can only be free if workers are free, etc., etc. So they are looking at the unity of all of the progressive forces. And then you have the critical theory people who are saying you have to look at power and oppression in a capitalist, Western capitalist society. Okay, woman is not separate, but it's part of the bigger oppression. And women have to link up arms with uh, people of color, uh, people who are poor, etc. And they're also anarchists. And Dr. Jorge will remind you that uh, May 1st, what's May 1st? What's so important about it? The labor. Was yeah, it, uh, the labor. It's, a, it's the labor day that was developed by the anarchists in Chicago. But it's not Labor Day anymore in the US, in the whole world. Labor Day is May 1st from Chicago. It's gone. Kaput's here. It's separate. Because they say, oh, maybe it's communistic. Like, it came from here. The anarchists started the Labor Day in Chicago. Only in America, as they say. And then we have revolutionary Marxists who would say that the woman's struggle is not separate from the bigger's uh, revolutionary struggle against you know, the ruling classes, you know, the landlord, the Tsar, uh, whoever else were opposed to social change. So from ideology alone, looking from ideas, okay, uh, there are different kinds of feminism already. 
and we'll look at post-feminism too. It's basically, they're basically saying, look, what, what are you complaining? You can work, you, you go, you know, your childcare, you, you drive a car, what's your problem? Let's forget about feminism, we're all already equal. That's the argument of post-feminists. You know? I don't agree, I'm just telling you all the different brands. So libertarian feminists would say, if I want to have 3D looking tattoos, none of you are concerned. Let me be, okay? If I want to have 3D looking tattoos wherever I want to have them, okay? Now, we'll do around the table again. Perk you up. You don't have your caffeine boost, huh? <laughs> okay, what are some stereotypes about Islam in general? and Muslim women in particular. Who is she, by the way? No clue. No clue. This universe. Good try. <laughs> She'll be happy to hear that. Is she from Jordan? Yeah, you got it. And you I got believe, it. I believe she was the queen? Correct, she's the queen of Jordan. Queen Rania, excellent. Dr. Hore, plus five points. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Queen Rania, and she is Muslim. Okay. What's, what's, is she from the United States? She's Palestinian, and she studied everywhere, and she worked elsewhere. She's global, basically. Yeah. And her husband, the king, studied in England and has a proper King's English accent. They're very global. You got it. And the former Queen Noor was also very like this, much like this. Should be glad you call her Miss Universe or whatever. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, she's all over. When there are meetings, high level, and she's always invited to high level meetings. With you two, you know, Bono or whoever they are. Yeah. Okay, stereotypes, please. Round the table. They don't have to say who they marry. They don't have a say on who they marry, yeah. Please come up here. Next stereotype. They don't have a voice, their own voice. Okay. They don't have their own voice. Next. The religion itself. Um, violent or produces anger. The religion itself is violent or produces anger. Worthless than a man, daughter, son. Okay. Another stereotype. And they're submissive in that respect. In other words, they at least seem to be willing to to willingly accept a lesser role. Women are willing to accept a lesser role. Okay. Yeah. No, I was gonna say kind of what he said. Uh, uh, being timid, being able to, you know, maybe the male counterpart. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> actually. Uh, when I'm working at the bank, uh, I, I notice sometimes when, uh, when the Indian, you know, couple they they come in, and you know they're handling business, and the account might be in the woman's uh, uh, name, and I'm working with her, and then you know you might have a guy kind of tell, trying to tell her what to do, uh, trying to make decisions for her, reaching for things when she's the actual customer. <coughs> so it's it's kind of interesting sometimes to to kind of deal with that. I have to let him know. I said, well, you know, she's a customer. You know, I understand yeah. you guys. Can't, can't you see that? Or yeah, of course, oh, of course, of course. So it's uh, it's very interesting. I see it more often than not. So you know what? All of with your bank experiences, I agree with Doctor Ray. You have to write something about your experiences in your bank. Adult education.